Women in menopause are claiming they can't lose weight even when dieting. What's going on here? You're not alone. If you're a woman going through menopause, we're going to discuss that topic in this episode. And we're gonna look at what the science says about this, or more specifically, what the research doesn't say. Wanna thank Orange Theory for making this series possible. I've been studying fat loss my entire career. As a graduate student, I was studying the effects of exercise and nutrition on women with obesity. And for the last 10 to 15 years, I've been studying fat loss in younger, metabolically healthy women. And what have I learned during this time? That diets work. Whenever researchers put subjects on a diet, they always lose weight. When you burn more calories than you consume, fat loss happens. As I acknowledge this fact, I'm also asking why does it seem that some women, particularly women going through menopause, are just not responding to normal fat loss stimulus that would normally cause weight loss? So here's the scenario. Lifting Laura eats 1800 calories per day to maintain her weight. She decides that she wants to go on a diet to lose a few pounds. And she loses about a pound per week until she reaches her goal weight. And she's done this a lot throughout her life. She did this when she was 29 years old, 32 years old, 36 years old, 39 years old, 41 years old. You get the point. She's done this continually throughout her life. She needs to lose a little bit of weight. She reduces her calories to 1,400 calories to achieve her weight loss goals. Every time she diets, she predictably loses weight until she doesn't. She's now 49 years old. She's gained more weight than she ever has, but she has this thought in the back of her mind that says, okay, I just gotta go on a diet. I've done this before, I'll do it again. So lifting Laura reduces her calories to 1,400 calories per day, but this time, the weight's not really moving. So what does she do? She does what everybody would do. She reduces her calories further. She now reduces her calories to 1,200 calories per day. She does this for a few weeks, and unfortunately, the same thing. Her body weight is not moving. The scale is not showing any loss in body weight, and even her body composition reports aren't showing any loss of body fat. Now she reduces her calories to 1,000 calories per day. And it's important to know, she's been maintaining her fitness routine. She hasn't changed anything she's been doing about her exercising. She's lifting weights and even doing some cardio. She does this very low calorie diet for a few weeks. And finally, she sees a one pound loss of body fat. Now, do you see what happened here? Lifting Laura had to take her calories to an extremely low level an extent literally that she could not maintain for a long period of time because it's too severe. She had to do this for multiple weeks until she got just a one pound change in her body fat levels. Now this doesn't change what we know about energy balance, but for some reason, her body just wasn't responsive to the fat loss stimulus that it used to be throughout her entire life. Now this was a hypothetical example, but here's some examples of real communications that I've received from many women over the last year or so. All right, so what do we do with this information? Well, I think we have two options. The first option is we can tell women to exercise harder and to reduce their calories more. After all, the research says that when you reduce your calories or you exercise more, you'll lose weight. The other option is we believe the women who are saying that they cannot lose weight when they're in a caloric deficit and we investigate some new strategies that may be the answer to why this is happening. Now I'm gonna talk through both of these options as a researcher. I'm gonna start with the reasons that I hear of what some, some fitness professionals, will say about why we can't believe these claims that women aren't able to lose weight even though they're dieting. The first argument that we often hear is that we have an abundance of research that reports people under-report what they're actually eating. So people will say, hey, I'm only eating a thousand calories. But in reality, when we scrutinize this under scientific conditions, they're eating like 1,300 calories or 1,400 calories. We call this under-reporting, and that's true. We have a lot of research that documents that people generally eat more than what they think they're eating. 
The same is true for exercise. People will tend to overestimate the amount of calories that they're burning from exercise when they're actually burning significantly fewer calories from their exercise program. Another reason that we'll commonly hear about people challenging this claim about not being able to lose body weight is that we have all of these studies in the research literature that when researchers put subjects on a diet, they always lose body weight. Thousands of studies have documented this. When subjects are in a negative energy balance, they lose weight. Now, one thing we do have to appreciate is that researchers, when they publish their data, they report it in a group average. So we have to appreciate that not every subject, even when they're given the same diet, they don't all lose the same amount of weight. Some will lose a little bit of weight, others will lose more, but the way that the data is published is as an overall group average. Now, the success of these research published studies work across all populations. Let's just name a few. This has been shown in sedentary people. This has been shown in women. This has been shown in men. This has been shown in bodybuilders. Even people that watch Love is Blind. All right, there hasn't been research in people that watch Love is Blind, but you get the point. This happens across all populations in the research literature. But do you know the one population that has not been studied? It is women who've embraced a fitness lifestyle and who are going through menopause right now. In particular, women who claim that they cannot lose body weight, they're experiencing weight loss resistance. We don't have research in this specific population. I can't find one intervention, one scientific published study that has taken perimenopausal women and put them on a diet. And if we're gonna extrapolate this, what about women who claim that they are undergoing weight loss resistance? Again, I can't find one published study. So earlier I said when we're confronted with this, as health coaches, fitness professionals, medical professionals, we have two options. The first option was to not believe these claims and to double down on dieting and more exercise. The other option is to believe that this is occurring and then investigate why this may be happening. So let's talk about that for a few minutes. Why do I believe this subgroup of women when they reach out to me and say that they're struggling losing weight? Well, the easy answer is because I observed this firsthand with my wife. If you haven't watched the first episode in this series yet, make sure you go back and watch that episode. That sets the entire stage for this entire series and it really impressed upon me as I was helping my wife try to lose body weight as she was going through menopause, that we were stuck. And again, I'm a fat loss researcher. I have a lot of strategies and years of experience in helping people lose weight. And I was very frustrated because I couldn't help her lose weight. The first thing that I think of when we are dealing with this population is that they are not what I and other researchers call a general population. So what is a general population? Well, these are people who aren't embracing a fitness lifestyle. They're very new to fitness. Many of these people in the general population, they don't have much knowledge about nutrition. So they're very prone to under-reporting how much they're eating. Many of these people don't know the difference between a carb and a protein or a fat. So this, this general population just is not very advanced in their knowledge in fitness or nutrition. So these women that are reaching out to me claiming that they can't lose weight when dieting, they are not a general population. In fact, many of these women are fitness professionals themselves, nutritionists, medical professionals. These are women who not only embrace a fitness lifestyle, but for years have tracked every gram of food that has gone into their bodies. They're not missing their workout. So these are women that I would believe that they know what's going on they understand negative energy balances and still their body is not responding to the stimulus of a caloric deficit. All right, so let me go on with this line of thinking for another minute here. If I have a young person, male or female, reach out to me and they're relatively new to fitness and they say, hey, I've been dieting for weeks and weeks and I can't lose weight. Diets don't work. I would be very inclined to not believe that individual. So why would I cast doubt on their claim? Well, because they're new to fitness, they're new to understanding nutrition, and I would think the abundance of research that says they're likely under-reporting what they're doing is likely true. 
true. Now let's move to the other population. When you're a woman who's in this very specific phase of life going through menopause, you've embraced a fitness lifestyle and you've been dieting for a longer period of time and you're not losing weight, I'm not so quick to cast aside your claim that it is not working. And as I think about all of the research that I've read over the years, again, I'm impressed by this. We have tons of research on menopause, thousands of studies. We even have, fortunately now, a lot of studies in the fitness arena. So we have female fitness physiology research and we have a ton of menopause related research. But when you try to merge these two, when you look for research that combines women who are going through menopause and that have embraced a fitness lifestyle, that literature is void. We don't have this population studied under scientific conditions. Remember our three categories of experience? Cruisers, grinders, train wrecks. What I think might be happening here is that we have a subsample of women who are having a train wreck experience and a smaller portion of these women are experiencing true weight loss resistance. So I'm not trying to make an argument that this is happening to everybody that's middle-aged. No, far from that. A lot of women going through menopause are not gonna have a problem trying to lose weight. But I do believe a certain subset of women, our train wreck group, a certain subsample of them are really struggling to lose body weight that they gained. And I ask, where's the research on this population? Where's the interest from the fitness community? Where's the interest from health coaches? One thing I've learned is that this population is generally ignored by many people in the fitness community. There's quite a bit of a bias and a focus on younger metabolically fit people in the fitness community. Now I make all of these points and I wanna reiterate, I'm not backing away from the evidence-based research that has contributed to our knowledge about what causes fat loss to work. We know that a caloric deficit works for almost everyone, but it seems in a small subsample of women going through menopause, the threshold of a caloric deficit that they have to meet is too extreme and it's too aggressive for them to realistically stick to that level of calorie intake for an extended period of time. So based on this anecdotal data of communications that I get, I'm willing to acknowledge that some women do indeed experience weight loss resistance. And notice that I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything here. I am fully admitting that this data is anecdotal. I cannot point to the scientific literature and validate these claims. But what if I told you we did have research that has documented and validated weight loss resistance? Well, in the last episode, we talked about the importance of sleep. And remember, I brought the receipt. I gave you every single study citation when I went over these studies. One of those studies clearly showed that weight loss or fat loss resistance does happen. If you remember in that study, when men and women were put on a sleep deprived condition and a non sleep deprived condition and consuming the same number of calories, they lost significantly less body fat compared to when they were not sleep deprived. In fact, they lost less than half the amount of body fat when they were sleep deprived compared to not sleep deprived. That is an example of weight loss or fat loss resistance. And guess which population across the whole human experience suffers from sleep deprivation more than any other time of life? If you said women going through menopause, you nailed it. And just because I'm willing to acknowledge that a small subsample of women experience weight loss resistance does not mean that I'm backing away from the principles of scientific fat loss. But it does force me as a scientific researcher a fat loss researcher to investigate alternative theories as to why this may be happening. Why are they being resistant to normal stimuli that should cause fat loss? All right, so we've acknowledged that weight loss resistance likely occurs in a subsample of women. So let me give just a few pieces of advice for those of you that are currently struggling with this right now. In terms of your diet, I would encourage you to focus on a whole food diet and as much as you can, limit the amount of ultra processed foods in your diet. Now, I'm not going into a deep dive on this, but I will say the greater amounts of highly processed foods you eat, 
that is working against all of your body composition goals. It's working against your goal of reducing body fat. In terms of your exercise, let me encourage you to continue your exercise program. Combine resistance training with some cardio training. In terms of lifestyle, do everything you can to prioritize sleep. Try to get as much sleep as you can and also try to reduce your stress levels as much as you can. Now on this last note, this is where hormone replacement therapy can help a lot of women. And I wanna acknowledge Hone Health for sponsoring this entire series. If you're interested in hormone replacement therapy or interested in learning more, check out Hone Health. In the next episode, we're gonna start taking a deep dive on hormone replacement therapy. All right, so here we get to the point where I wanna learn from you. Are any of you experiencing weight loss resistance? And I wanna thank you, the thousands of you that have already communicated with me. But this is very important. The more of you that can share your experiences, and again, just comment in, in this YouTube episode, tell me about your experiences. The more that this is acknowledged, the better we're gonna have people that are motivated to help answer why this is happening. And maybe some of you haven't experienced weight loss resistance. I wanna hear that as well, because remember, not everybody will experience this. And I also wanna challenge my fitness professional colleague. Where am I wrong? Do you disagree with my thinking on this? Please tell me what your thinking is on this as well. So join me in the next episode. And also, I'm a man. A lot of men are ignorant to all of this. Share this with at least one man in your life who would benefit from this information. I'll see you in the next episode.